Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to my reading journey. Hope we're all doing fine and today we're gonna continue Marcus Aurelius meditations and it's gonna be the third book. So let's get started. A man must only must not only consider how daily his life vast have and discreet but this also but this also that if he live long he cannot be certain whether his understanding small shall continue to so able and sufficient for either discreet consideration in matter of businesses or for contemplation it being the thing whereon true knowledge of things both divine divine and human both sorry doth dab depend for if once he shall begin to dot dot his his respiration nutrition his imaginative and appetitive and other natural faculties may still continue the same he shall find no want of them but how to make that right use of himself that he should how to observe exactly in all things that which is right and just how to read redress and rectify all wrong or sudden apprehensions and imaginations and even of this particular whether he should live any longer or no to consider consider duly for all th such things were in the best strength and we go we go of the mind as most requisite his power and ability will be past all gone thou must hasten therefore not only because thou art every day nearer unto death than other but also because that intellect intellective faculty in thee whereby thou art enabled to know the true nature of things and to order order all thy actions by that knowledge doth daily waste and decay or may fail thee before thou die This also through thou you you must observe that whatsoever it is that nature doth happen to things natural hath some somewhat in itself that is pleasing and delightful as a great love when it's baked some parts of it cleave as it were and part asunder and made the crest of it rugged and unequal and yet those parts of it though in some sort it be against the art of the art and intention of baking itself that they are thus cleft and parted which should have been and were first made all even and uniform they become it will never never the nevertheless and have a certain particular property to stir the appetite so fix are accounted fairest and repast then when they begin to shrink and wither as it were so ripe 
all olives when they ne when they are next to pet pot put putrefaction putrefaction then are they then are they in their proper beauty the hanging down of grapes the brow of a lion the froth of a foaming wild wild boar and many other like things though by themselves considered they are far from any beauty yet because they happen naturally they both are commonly and delightful so that if a man shall with a profound mind and apprehension consider all things in the world even among all those things which are but mere accessories and natural append appendices appendices as it were there will scarce appear anything unto him wherein he will not find matter of pleasure and delight so will he behold with it with as much pleasure that true rictus rictus of wild beasts as those which by skillful painters and other artificers are imitated so will he able be will he be able to perceive the proper ripeness and beauty of old age whether in man or woman and whatsoever else it is that is beautiful and alluring in whatsoever is and chaste and continent uh, eyes he will soon filed out and this this cern those and many other things will he discern not credible unto everyone but unto them only who are truly and famil fami familiarly acquainted both with nature itself and all natural things hypocrites having cured many sicknesses fell sick himself and died the chaldeans and astrologians having foretold the deaths of divers were afterwards themselves surprised by the fates Alex alexander and pompeius and Caesar, having destroyed so many towns and cut off in the field so many thousand both of horse and foot yet they themselves at last were fain to part with their own lives fain they were fain to part Heraclitus, Heraclitus, having written so many natural tracts, considering the last and general conflagration, conflagration of the world, died afterwards and filled with water within. Died afterwards, all filled with water within, and all without without with dirt and dung without
police killed Democritus and Socrates, another son of Vermin, wicked, ungodly man. How then stands the case? How then stands the case? Thou hast taken ship, thou hast sailed, thou art come to land, go out, if to another life, thou also shalt thou find gods, who are everywhere, if all life and sense shall cease, then shalt thou cease also to be subject to either pains or pleasures, and to serve and tend this wild cottage so much the wilder by how much that which ministers unto a doth excel the one being a rational substance and a spirit the other nothing but earth and blood all right guys that was the the first part of the third book and we're gonna continue tomorrow thank you for joining me today and see you bye